And we are back on Capitol tonight. Since Andrew Cuomo's sweeping victory over Carl Palladino in November 2010, the search has been on for the next Republican to take on Cuomo. And that challenge has grown bigger over the past two and a half years as the governor enjoyed high approval ratings and grew his war chest to over $20 million. But now it looks like someone is at least starting to step forward. Assemblyman Steve McLaughlin says he is considering running in 2014. I caught up with him at the Capitol earlier today to talk about that decision. Assemblyman, thanks very much for joining me this evening. Pleasure. So uh, the story in the New York Post today, you are indeed interested in running for governor next year. Well, I'm considering it for sure. I've not made any announcements. I haven't made any decisions. I think, quite honestly, the story might be a little bit ahead of where I am as far as a decision goes. But, you know, I was asked a question, are you considering it? And I answered honestly, like I always do, and said, yes, I'm considering it. So, so why are you considering it? What's, what, and what's your thought process that would get you to yes or no at this point? Well, I mean, there's a lot of process that goes into it. Part of it is family. Is my family going to be on board with this and supportive of this? I, I think they will be. Uh, We've begun to talk about it a little bit. It's a big challenge. Uh, certainly money is an issue, let's face it. The governor's sitting on $23 million, and I'm sure that, that's not the end of his fundraising. It's interesting, though, that he talks about campaign finance reform when he's sitting on $23 million. Uh, but I, uh, that's a factor. I do think we can raise enough money. And the truth is I've been outspent in every campaign I've ever been in. Last year I was outspent 5 to 1, and we won. So. I believe that the, the people of New York are ready for a change. I think that this governor is starting to wear thin on them, especially in upstate New York. There's no doubt the SAFE Act damaged him greatly in upstate New York. Uh, people are irritated, they're mad, and from what I hear, it's the same way on Long Island. So there's a lot of those factors that come in, but mostly really what it comes down to is this state is off track badly, and I don't think Andrew Cuomo has the skills or, quite frankly, the desire to do what's necessary to fix this state and make it thrive. We get a lot of talk, we get a lot of grand pronouncements, and then months later, nothing's happened. Uh, so I, you know, you take a look at, you have the, the Texas governor running ads in your state. There's a real problem there. And the fact that New York remains number 49 out of 50 on the list of business-friendly states, that's the exact position we were in the day he took office. So really, what has he done to fix New York? Uh, there was a poll out today that showed the governor is at a 58 percent, which is the lowest so far since he was elected actually back in 2010. Mm -hmm. But it's still 58 percent. It's mm -hmm. still well above uh, uh, 50 percentage points. Do you, do you see him being weakened at all? And at the same time, do you think you have a shot at capturing downstate votes, especially in the suburbs of Long Island and Westchester? Yeah, I absolutely do think that. And I don't really pay that much attention to polls. I didn't during my last race. It's nice when they're in your favor and when they're not, oh, well, what are you going to do? I don't pay that much attention to them because at the end of the day, people that I'm talking to here in upstate New York, and it's Republican and it's Democrat, are not happy with the direction of the state. If you look at the state, uh, especially upstate, it is declining rapidly. And what's he really doing? Managing the decline? I want this state to thrive. I want this state to grow. People are selling their homes and they are leaving the state of New York. They aren't selling and buying another home in overwhelming numbers. They're leaving. So the state slogan is it, I love New York or I left New York because they're heading out of here for greener pastures. It doesn't need to be that way. It's too great of a state to be in decline like this. And I believe it can be turned around, but it's going to take tough decisions. It's going to take somebody that's willing to work with both sides of the aisle. And this governor's not shown that. He's shown that he can be a bully and that he can strong arm people, but he doesn't want to listen to any other uh, opinion other than his own. That isn't the way you lead and that isn't the way you get people behind you supporting you. And I'm going to tell you the truth, I've got a lot of people that are Democrats that are in elected office that are saying they're not very supportive of Andrew Cuomo right now. Now are they going to say that publicly? Probably not. But would they vote for a Republican do you think? Well, I believe they would, but you know what? That's why we hold elections and that's why we see what happens. And as I said, I've made no decisions, I'm seriously considering it. And I will say this, if it isn't me that runs for office, it better be somebody like me that's willing to get in there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this man and point out where he's gone wrong and point out why we're off track in this state. You cannot fight off the ropes. You've got to get right in the middle of the ring and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Well, do you see anybody else out there who is like you? I mean, Chris Collins, uh, the former Erie County executive, he's now a congressman. He's ruled it out. Chris Gibson, a uh, congressman from the Hudson Valley, he's ruled it out. There's also Rob Astorino, the Westchester County executive, mm -hmm. and he hasn't given any indication about what he plans on doing next year, but he is also running for re-election 
as well. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a little distracted there. Do you see anybody else who is a potential challenger to the governor? Well, those are all fine men, and they'd all make outstanding candidates. And I'm very close with, with Congressman Gibson. He's a good friend of mine. I know Rob Astrino. I don't know Chris, but I've heard great things about him. All of them would be fantastic candidates. And there's some women out there that would be great candidates as well. And I'm not saying I'm running. I just simply just somebody called and asked a question, are you interested, are you thinking about running? And I answered honestly, and now the story has sort of gotten legs, if you will. I am considering it. There are plenty of people that can do this job uh, and do it very, very well. But the way you do the job correctly is to, like I said, bring in all sides of the issue, all sides of the aisle, both sides, talk to people and form a consensus about what's the best thing to do, not continuously jam things down our throats. And we're seeing it here this week with the gambling bill. That's changed three mm -hmm. times in the past couple of days as well. What was three casinos is now four casinos. Well, that came out of the blue. Nobody knew that. He hid the bill to the last minute. Women's Equality Act, same thing. Hid the bill right up to the last minute. And back to the casinos for a second. Now he's saying to the racino operators, if you oppose my bill, I'm just going to roll out 5,000 slot machines around various locations outside of New York City. So everything he does is a strong arm bullying tactic. And I got to tell you, Nick, people don't like bullies. Um, you know, you, you are talking about something, though, the legislative uh, agenda that he's pushing in this month. And I think to play devil's advocate here for a second, mm -hmm. the governor were here, he'd probably say, you know, if you look at the totality of his record, he has been working with Republicans in the Senate. In fact, that's been one of his hallmarks and something to the great of annoyance of his own Democratic base is that he's worked very well with Republican lawmakers. So what would you do differently to navigate the legislature in Albany? And, you know, with all due respect, you have only been here. I think you're in the middle of your second term. That's correct. Um, you know, what would you do differently and what sort of, you know, skill set would you bring that the governor has not been able to utilize? Well, I, first of all, I disagree that he's been working that closely with the Republican Party. I think that he's been strong arming both sides of the aisles, Republican and Democrat. He's been sort of telling people the way things are going to be and then threatening people to do things his way. It's his way or the highway and we see it over and over again. Uh, the way I do things is a little bit different. I will reach out to both sides and I'm perfectly willing to talk to people who disagree with me and form a consensus opinion about what the best thing to do is. Do I have my own But can you get anything done that way? I think you can. I think that's how great leaders lead. That you, you surround yourself with people that are that are better than you in at their jobs. You don't have to be the, the biggest, toughest guy in the room. You've got to be a leader and you've got to talk to people and bring in people that are experts at what they do on both sides. I mean, there's, this is a state that, it, it, I don't believe it's as far left as people think. It's, certainly it's a blue state, it's a Democrat state, but there's plenty of blue collar Reagan Democrats out there who are just wanting somebody to tell them the truth and lead this state in the right direction. They're sick and tired of being at the bottom of every bad list and at the top, uh, bottom of every good list and the top of every bad list. They want the state to throw they want their kids to have a place to go when they graduate school, and that place should be New York. Grandma and Grandpa shouldn't have to move out of the state because they can't afford it. We've gotten so far off track in this state, and I believe this is a, a chance to pull the state back from the brink. We need a strong fiscal conservative in office who's not going to spend more money than we have, and quite frankly, to the governor's credit, I'll give him credit, the first two years he was in office, he was off to a pretty good start. But then he took a hard left turn in the state of the state. He's not turned back. He's going further and further left. He jammed the SAFE Act down the throats of New Yorkers. 53 counties have risen up and pushed back and opposed it. Now he brings the sheriffs in, tells them to keep their mouths shut, don't oppose it. So apparently we're going to attack the First Amendment along with the Second. So he's just acting in a way that is not uh, anything more than bullying behavior. Um, you have a reputation, for better or for worse, of shooting from the hip. Mm. Uh, the last guy who uh, ran for governor against Andrew Cuomo was Carl Palladino, and I think he had a kind of a, a, a similar reputation as well, maybe a little bit more out there. We, we, do you think that would be an issue? Do you think uh, uh, being blunt, being able to give your opinion on things so honestly, do you think that would be a hindrance to you being able to run for governor? I think it's a positive, and, and I don't shoot from the hip, I shoot from the brain. I, I think about what I'm saying before I say it, and then I tell, tell you exactly what I'm thinking and too many politicians don't do that so I think a lot of people say I'm a breath of fresh air I'll just tell you exactly what I'm thinking I don't th I think that's a strength I mean how could that be perceived as a weakness somebody that stands up and tells you exactly what they're thinking and doesn't play politics all the time and doesn't give you double speak and that's a lot of what we get from Andrew Cuomo is, is double speak and, and say one thing and then do another uh, I think the people are, are just craving a real person somebody that they can relate to somebody that's likable and uh, 
uh, and someone that's going to tell them the truth, for better or worse. And the fact is, New York has some hard decisions to, be, to make about moving this state in a, in a very positive direction, rather than in a direction that Andrew Cuomo wants to take us, which is farther and further to the left. And that is, that's a recipe for disaster. You look at California, it's not working out there, it's not going to work here either. Okay, we're almost out of time, but I do want to ask you just, uh, where do you think the timetable is for a decision? Well, I mean, this, this thing sort of <laughs> ran away from us a little bit. It wasn't, wasn't my attention. I didn't reach out and talk to anybody. They called me. Uh, you know, I would say probably by the end of the summer we'll make a decision, certainly by mm -hmm. the early fall, because if we're going to launch a campaign, that's the time to do it. I want to talk to party leaders. I want to see where they are uh, and, and see what the, what the support is out there. I think the grassroots support is there. We need the party support as well. All righty. Thanks very much for your time tonight, Steve. Appreciate Thanks. it. McLaughlin and anyone else considering a run in 2014 did get some good news with today's Siena poll. The percentage of voters ready to give Cuomo another term is the lowest it's been since he took office. After the break, we'll hear from Siena pollster Steve Greenberg about that drop and why voters think of Speaker Silver and the legislature. That's straight ahead.